class in chapter 5 of the Wilkinson text, the author highlights techniques to facilitate focusing of the group's attention. And one of the most subtle, subtle yet powerful benefits of using a whiteboard, if you can envision this, is that when a trained facilitator writes down exactly what the participants are saying, the participants can immediately see whether their comments are staying on the topic. So they're immediately getting that feedback of, of wow, we're going off offline, we're going off topic. Uh, let's stay with what the facilitator, we, what we all agreed to be facilitated about. It's this visualization of the actual words that people are saying that maintains the cohesive, focus group thought process that makes focus facilitation so powerful and possible. Hey class, I'd like to take a moment to look at the facilitation diagram provided on page 78 of the text. This is the familiar diagram that, you're, that you, we've all been seeing as we work through the text in front of every chapter. Michael Wilkinson puts this, this diagram in front of us. And we're now entering the facilitation cycle. And just prior to this, you can see the work we've just done in prior works where we're preparing for success and getting the session started. Class, as you look at this diagram, you'll recognize the work we've been doing in class over the past couple of weeks. And hopefully this is, this is coming together for you. And you're seeing that you were preparing for success when we knew what our five P's were. We're getting the session started, of course, with our I-E-E-I. -E -E and now we're at the stage in Chapter 5 where we understand that we've been focusing the group. We're establishing the course and avoiding the detours. I sort of focus on how much structure there is and also how succinctly the structure has been noted in this diagram. This is an excellent model of facilitation and it helps me to understand that facil the facilitation cycle is really this set of focusing the group, using the pen, and having the right information gathering tools at hand in order to be successful. And while our tone is that of a neutral facilitator, our actions are of someone that is decidedly in charge of the events. We have a plan, we have a go-to method, we have uh, tools in our toolkit that are going to allow us to be successful. And not only are we in charge, but we're also that person who's responsible and we're acting that way for the use of the time and the execution of the process. All right, so let's specifically set our attention as we move forward to chapter five on focusing the group. And let's learn these techniques and secrets that are going to make us more effective at this critical step in the facilitation process. So class, I'm looking at chapter Five, page 80 of the Michael, Michael Wilkinson text, Secrets of Facilitation. And on page 80 down at the bottom, there's this subtle secret to using checkpoints. And he's, he's suggesting that we provide a review, a preview, and a big view at the beginning of each new agenda item or facilitated process. What I love about these small little secrets that he drops in the text is how important they are and the way that they they just lay them on us as if they're no big deal but this is a powerful technique to use and really the mark I know I've said this before on other points of the book but this is really the mark of a polished professional to be able to do this to make sure that everyone's together and that's why this chapter is all about focusing but the three parts of a checkpoint this review review quickly what has been done to date, preview, describe briefly what the group is about to do, big view, explain how the previewed agenda item fits into the overall objective of the session. Those are three things that people are going to be looking for and if you begin setting a cadence for them then the expectation consistently being met really feeds into how well our group begins working. The group begins to have a rhythm as well and we begin thinking as one. 
These are powerful concepts and we get better at utilizing these, these tips and techniques as we use them. But it's important to pause a moment and to reflect on just how good they are. What good secrets these are to learn. Class, now I'm on page 81 of the text. And I'll pause a moment to make sure you're on the right page with me. Page 81, chapter 5. There's a sample checkpoint halfway down on the page that provides an easy example of how the checkpoint keeps your group focused and how the, fa and the facilitator stays squarely in the driver's seat of the event. Class, another great feature of the text is Michael Wilkinson's honesty in sharing some of the failures that I'm sure he has experienced or other facilitators have experienced. They're very common. And how much we can learn from these mistakes. This, I think, is the mark of, of what makes this one of the best texts I've ever used, in, in both in being a student and, and obviously as being an instructor. I think this is a really great book. So in this story on that starts on page 82, chapter 5, the facilitator makes a mistake. They omit, they forget to share the, the big picture as, as to why they're doing what it is that they're doing. And this is noted immediately by someone who's really focused in the meeting. Whenever you're doing facilitated sessions, you can tell that you're running a good one when people pick up on your mistakes or the things you've overlooked. It's because they're paying attention. When everyone agrees with everything that you're doing, it's probably because either you're perfect, which is not that likely, or they're, maybe they're not listening. So this is a great example of how, while this person may be perceived as someone who's being difficult, actually they're saving the, the entire group from wasting time. So it's, it's a great example. So if you read this section that carries on over to page 83, you'll learn that what was done incorrectly was at least followed up by some really good behavior on behalf of the facilitator. And the lesson learned here is that when you make a mistake by not supporting your group with the proper techniques, those techniques that are going to make sure that everyone is able to follow where you are and what it is you're doing, that it's very important to own up to it and to acknowledge a recommendation that might come from the audience of, of those who are being facilitated when they say, wait a minute, I'm not sure why, why we're doing something. Um, they may come off as being a bit bossy, for, perhaps, but the fact is the person really improved the overall situation for everyone. And now the facilitator acted correctly and we're back on track and we're able to have a, a, a successful session. Class, when you're facilitating a group, perhaps you're new to the group or they're new to you, one of the toughest things that can happen is when someone interrupts you and casts doubt on what it is that we're doing and why are we doing this, this may not be necessary for us to do. Now this can happen no matter how well planned your session is if you have not included the group in on the big picture, the big view about why each step is necessary in order for us to be successful. It's totally fitting and proper that someone should call you out on leaving them in the dark. This is a facilitated session and if they've been in several of these that were run correctly, they feel informed the whole time. They feel they understand everything the whole time when they're done right. They know why we're doing each thing. That's because the facilitator is doing her job or his job correctly. And while we've done some significant planning for this event, this is this is game time. This is this is for real now. And we have to make sure that real time we're keeping people informed as to each step of of the the checkpoint and making sure that we we review what's just been done, we preview about what we're going to do, and that we give a big view. Before we start, 
we lay the foundation for why this is a good reason and why there is a very good reason for us to do this next step because each step in our process each item that we're going to do is going to take some of their time it's fitting and well that they understand their time is going to be used correctly especially when you're uh, you're facilitating people who are leading the organization they're very busy you're taking them away from something else that they could probably spend their time on so remember if someone asks you why we are doing this you've probably omitted the big view another way to state what I just said was if you want to make sure that people don't ask you why we are doing this which is a very uncomfortable situation to be in if you want to avoid that make sure you give them checkpoints with the review, the preview, and most importantly, the big view about how this, this particular next step fits into the overall agenda that they all agreed was the right thing to do.